Kia ora. In this video we're going to have a look at a relationship investigation using NZ Grapher. But before we do that, let's have a quick look at the clarifications from the standard. So the intent of the relationship investigation is to collect or source data and describe any visible trend using direction and strength, as well as groups and unusual values. Our kanga or students should relate the features that they describe closely to the context. They shouldn't be using X's and Y's. The relationship investigations are useful for making predictions. A completed investigation needs to include a prediction, and the prediction should be informal. They should be made either using substitution into a trend line or just by visually looking at where it might go on the graph. Students shouldn't be using regression analysis at level one. So the feature of the data that the student should be discussing is the direction and the strength of the relationship, any clusters, any unusual or interesting data points, and any patterns that they might see. So let's jump into NZ Grapher. So what we're going to do is we're going to change our graph type to a scatter graph. So we've got our scatter graph here. The data set I'm using for this today is the sports science data set. It's real data from the Australian Institute of Sport and it provides information on 102 male and 100 female athletes. So we're going to look at today just very simply at height versus weight. So height is going to be our variable one, which is our explanatory variable, the one that goes along the bottom, and variable two is going to be our weight, which is our response variable, the variable that goes up the right hand side. So I'm going to come along and I'm going to label this a bit better. Um, so this here would be height versus weight of athletes. And the x axis is height, which is measured in centimeters. And our y axis is our weight, which is measured in kilograms. If I press update graph down in the bottom right hand corner, it's going to update our graph. So we can see overall, as the athletes get taller, they tend to get heavier. We can hover over any of these points and we can see what they are. So this here is a male who is in the field event. They have a height of 189.2 centimetres and a weight of 123.2. That athlete's got a much higher weight than we potentially would have expected. Uh, so that would be an unusual point that we could talk about. We've got a couple of athletes down here that are much shorter than the other athletes, but they do kind of follow the overall general trend. And we've got one athlete here who is a basketball player who is 209.4 centimetres tall, who is much taller than the other athletes. So these are all things that we can be talking about. Now, when we're referring to these points, we want to be talking about them in context, so we're talking about their height and their weight, not the X and Y. The other thing we can do is we can add in a mean dot. This mean dot here is the average of the heights and the average of the weights. So any trend line that we fit, we'd want to try and go through that point. So if we scroll down on our options here, we can come in and we can add in a custom line. This gives us these two points here, which we can drag around and we can get to roughly fit where we think our data is going to go. I feel like that's a reasonably good trend line. And if I was to make a prediction, what I could do is I could come along here and an athlete that is 160 centimeters tall, I would expect them to be about 50 kilograms in weight. What I can also do at this point is I can come along and I can add in a quadrant count. If you want to read more details on the quadrant count, there's details linked under this video. What this does is it puts a grid through that mean dot. So you've got quadrant one in the top right hand corner here, two, three, and four. If you've got a quite a strong positive relationship, you would get very few points in quadrant two and quadrant four. If you've got a strong negative correlation, you'd get very few points in quadrant one and three. What you can do is you can come up with a ratio. What this does is it adds the quadrant one and quadrant three points together and minuses off the quadrant two and quadrant four and divides by the total number of points. So the closer to one this number is, the stronger the relationship is in a positive direction, the closer to negative one, the stronger it is in a negative direction. And this quadrant count ratio is appropriate for students to be using at the new level one standard. Once you've got your graph or series of graphs that you might want to grab, if you right click on it, you can go copy image and then you can paste it into whatever document you're working on. 
So that's a little bit of an overview on how to use scatter graphs and some of the features in NZ Grapher for you doing a relationship investigation for the new level one standards. Thank you.